In this episode, I want to look at how we would do hitbox collisions. Uh, basically, hitboxes colliding on top of hitboxes. So, let me show you what this would look like. Okay, so I have two boxes on the screen. And what would happen if both of these boxes were to come in contact? So here you see that when they're colliding, that the uh, target box turns green. Now I've added a little extra feature that we're going to develop together, and that's when the uh, source box is over the target box, you'll see that it's creating that little red square that defines what is the collision area. That information will be useful to us if we wanted to make a game where when an object collides with another object, we want to push it off. So in other words, if I want, when this, uh, when the source block hits that target block, if I'd like to push it back out to make it look like that the object can't push past. And that's very useful information to have this red box here because it tells us exactly how far we'd have to move the source block to get it pushed out of the way. So, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started looking at how we would build that code. So the first thing I want to do is start with the code from our mouse exploration uh, where we uh, clicked and had the circles move around. So here's what we're going to need from that. Uh, we do want uh, the rectangle uh, at the very top, except let's uh, change that into two different rectangles. We'll call one the source rectangle. And then let's copy and paste that code. And then we'll make this one the target. So I'm going to have a source and a target. And just to make this a little more interesting, let's move the target closer to the center of the screen. So the center of the screen would be at 320 uh, and 240. Okay. All right. And let's see, we have a black, a yellow. And we're also going to need green. Okay, remember the colors are red, green, and I'm going to do green at 128, and blue. And then I'm also going to want to run red. Now for the red, I want it at full saturation so it'll show up better. So I'm going to start it at 255, 0, 0. Okay. Uh, and then in our event loop, let's see. Uh, we're not going to be using the mouse button up. So let's just, uh, I want you to take that code and you can, use, let's just, hmm, let's delete it. Yes, let's delete it. So we're going to take that code out. And then in the mouse motion, uh, this is going to be where we're going to move the source so we're going to say source.center will equal event.position. Okay, and that'll move our source rectangle. Uh, and then the last thing we want to do is to draw the two rectangles that we're going to need. Okay, so uh, we're going to get rid of drawing the circle. Instead of circle, we're going to draw uh, two rectangles. And remember how we do that? Uh, we give it the screen the color we want it to draw as, and the we're going to draw the outline in yellow. Okay, and here we're going to be drawing the source. Okay, and uh, the last thing we give it is whether or not we're going to fill it in or give it an outline. We're going to give it an outline of two pixels. Okay, so I want to do the same thing with the target. So draw rectangle to the screen in yellow, target, and again, a two pixel boundary. Okay, so this is a good time to save your code and test it to make sure that it works. Okay, and there we go. I have one rectangle following my mouse, and there's another one statically on the screen. Okay, so far so good. Now the next step is that we actually want to do that collision. Okay, and we're going to test for that collision in the mouse motion function. So after we've moved that source square, we want to test to see if it is colliding with our target. Now, I went ahead before this video, 
uh, and looked it up in the Pygame documentation, and I strongly recommend that you do the same thing. In the rectangle object, there is a function called Collide Rect, which allow you to determine if another rectangle is collided with your rectangle. So, how do we do that? Well, I say if my source collide rect with the target. Okay, so if that's true, then my colliding is true. Actually, let me back that up. There's actually a, a nicer way to do this. Instead of the if, why don't we just say colliding equals the source.collide rect. Now, what that will do for us, by using this instead of an if statement, one, it reduces the amount of code we need, because with the if statement, we would need, uh, if the collision is happening, set colliding to true, otherwise set colliding to false. So I get rid of the if and else statement here, and this is more directly saying what it is. I'm saying uh, colliding is equal to R is the source colliding with the rectangle. Okay? All right, now with that in place, what we can do I'm going to come over to where we're drawing our rectangles. I'm going to say if we are colliding, okay, then I want to draw one of these rectangles, pygame.draw rectangle. And remember, it is the uh, target that we want to draw. And so I'm going to draw it in green, okay, target. And when you want it to fill in the square, put in the value 0. All right? So um, I'm going to try this. I, I think this won't work. In, uh, no, it did work. OK, cool. So uh, when it's colliding, it turns green. Cool, cool, cool. I was worried that we hadn't initialized the colliding value, uh, but apparently that works here. Uh, if it didn't, basically what you would do uh, is you go to the top and you add a variable called colliding and set it to false. Uh, but it appears that uh, the mouse motion event took care of that for us. So we're good. Now, the last thing I want to do is we're going to ask for that overlay. And um, basically what that is is, uh, again, I looked this up in the Pygame documentation under the rectangle class there is a function called clip which will give you the intersection of the two rectangles. So, um, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, if we're colliding, we'll add that here. Uh, we're going to draw the rectangle to the screen in red. The source dot clip target. Now you can call a function inside of a function that works perfectly fine uh, and in this case what we're doing is we're asking for the intersecting uh, box between the source and the target. We're clipping that out and then we're going to paint it in that rectangle when there is a collision. So let's see what we got and there you go. So when I overlay it you'll see that that collision happens and it draws that red rectangle. Now what would we do with that? Well again that's going to determine where uh, we need or how far we need to push out the source so that it looks like it's colliding solid with the, with the block. Uh, I'm going to address how to do that in a future episode. Uh, for right now, I just want you to practice with looking at how the collision works. Okay. So think about how you might use this in your games. Again, this could be a good thing uh, if one character runs into another one, like if you uh, want to put items on the screen and have your character run around and pick them up, uh, this could be a way you could do that. I'd probably do that with the keyboard control over the mouse control, but you never know. You could have an idea in mind for a game that uses a mouse controlled object so that when it's colliding, uh, you might want to do some sort of interaction with that. So as always, try this stuff out. Make sure that you're typing in the code, you're practicing with it, uh, you're understanding it. If you do have any questions about how any of this works, please leave those co uh, questions in the comments, and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, thank you for watching, and have fun programming.